Welcome back, everybody. We just got done talking about the NCAA D1 softball, um, how they're doing, going up to the Super Regionals. Super interesting. Make sure you guys keep updated with that. And make sure you guys tune in to next week's show because we're going to cover the Super Regionals in softball. We're now moving on to talking about the Olympics because Team USA has announced some of their Olympic qualifiers. We'll talk about the sports sailing, climbing, open water swimming, and golf. And... <clears throat> Sorry, I just like choked on my own spit. We've already covered uh, beach volleyball, canoeing and kayaking, tennis, table tennis, surfing, taekwondo, wrestling, badminton, cycling, and fencing, and some two other of our shows. So if you're interested in seeing that, I recommend that you go check out last week and one of this week's show. Okay, so let's first talk about those who qualified for the Sailing USA team. Okay. Those who qualified are Lara Delman Weiss, Daniela Morose, Sarah Newberry Moore, Erica Reinecke, Stephanie Robel, Maggie Shea, and or Shea, Maggie Shea, I think it is, sorry, and Dominique Stater. Laura Delman Weiss is a notable figure in the world of sailing, particularly in the Olympic class 470 sailing competitions. Her strengths lie in her deep understanding of boat handling and race strategy, which are crucial for the dynamic and often under unpredictable conditions of Olympic sailing. Her experience in high pressure situations, ability to adapt quickly to changing conditions, and her synergy with her sailing partners amplify her effectiveness and competitiveness in the water. Dawn Weiss's campaign for the 2020 Olympics and participating in world championships and other international events such as the Hampel World Cup Series were significant parts of her career. Daniela Moraz has clinched multiple world championship titles in the Formula Kite class. Her repeated success at these events demonstrates her consistency and excellent in competitive kiteboarding. Moraz has been honored as the Rolex Yachtswoman of the Year multiple times. This prestigious award is given to sailors who show outstanding achievements in competitive sailing and receiving it multiple times underscores her exceptional talent and dedication. While kiteboarding has not yet been included in the Youth Olympic Games, Moreau's performance in related youth categories and international competitions has been really instrumental in building her reputation and skills in high-level competition settings. She is renowned for her ability to handle high-speed races, mastering the technical aspects of kite control, and balance in hydrofoil kiteboarding. Her technical skills are crucial for excelling in the precise and demanding races seen in Olympic kiteboarding. Sarah Newberry Moore achieved significant success at the 2013 Pan American Games, where she won a gold medal in the multi-hill category. She has also shown strong performances in events like the U.S. Sailing Rolex Miami's OCR, which is a part of the ISAF Sailing World Cup, really indicating her ability to compete at high levels consistently. Moore has been involved in Olympic campaigning, notably for the 2016 and 2020 Olympics. These campaigns require extensive preparation, commitment, and mastery of sailing skills, which are crucial for competing at the highest levels. The NARCRA 17 class is particularly challenging as it requires seamless coordination with a sailing partner in mixed gender teams. Moore's ability to work effectively in the team setting is demonstrated by her consistent performances. Now moving on, during her tenure at Boston College, Erica Reinecke excelled in collegiate sailing, earning the prestigious title of College Sailor of the Year. Reinecke has been a consistent performer on the international stage, securing top placements in Laser Radial Youth and Senior World Championships. She also competed in the 2019 Pan American Games in Peru, where she won a medal, demonstrating her talent and adaptability in international competitions. Competing in the laser radio class requires mastering a variety of sailing skills, including boat handling, speed control, and tactical racing strategies. Reinecke's success in this class demonstrates her high-level proficiency in understanding the dynamics of single-handed sailing and all those fundamentals. Then we got Stephanie Robble, who earned a prestigious world championship title in women's match racing. This title is a testament to her strategic um, her strategic performance, bow handling skills, and competitive spirit, and it's positioned her among the elite in women's sailing. Also, she has been recognized as U.S. Sailing's Rolex Yacht Woman of the Year and honor awarded to sailors who demonstrate outstanding achievement in competitive sailing, and we've been over that with one of the other Olympic competitors as well. Robble has also been active in Olympic campaigning 
And particularly in the 49er FX class, a high performance skiff designed for two person teams, Robo's success in both match racing and fleet racing has showcased her broad skill set. Match racing requires precise boat handling, technical decision making, and psychological warfare against opponents, while fleet racing demands speed, consistency, and the ability to manage multiple boats in variable, condi variable conditions, so you can already assume how much talent you need in both of those. Magnus J represented the U.S. in the 49er FX class at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Competing in the Olympics is a testament to her high-level skills, dedication, and competitive spirit, and it has really marked all of these sailors as one of the top sailors in their class, uh, considering that they all have qualified. She has consistently performed well at the, at the 49er FX World Championships and has secured top positions. Shay's prowess was also on display at the Pan American Games, where she won a medal there. This achievement adds to her profile as a versatile and competitive sailor across different types of racing formats. Shay has demonstrated her adaptability and tactical intelligence in managing these changes effectively during races. Her ability to make quick decisions under pressure is crucial for navigating courses that often feature shifting winds in tight competition. Lastly, Dominique Stater, she was the winner of the U.S. Olympic Team Trials. She also earned a silver medal in the 2023 Pan American Games, and she also was the winner of the U.S. Open Series in Miami, San Francisco, and Long Beach in 2022 and the year 2023. So now I'm going to talk about those that qualified for sports climbing, and those people are Natalie, Natalia Grossman, Emma Hunt, and Piper Kelly. Natalia Grossman has excelled on the IFSC Climbing World Cup circuit, particularly in bouldering. In addition to her international success, Grossman has also dominated national competitions and secured titles at the USA Climbing National Championships. Grossman's climbing style is characterized by her superb problem-solving skills, precision, and strength, especially in bouldering where powerful and dynamic moves are often, are well, they are required. <laughs> her proficiency in lead climbing also demonstrates her endurance and strategic route planning. Emma Hunt holds the American Women's Speed Record with 6.301 seconds set at the USA Climbing North American Cup in Salt Lake City in April, very recent. Hunt finished second overall in speed at the 2022 IFSC Climbing World Cup and has four World Cup podium finishes overall. She finished seventh at the 2021 IFSC Climbing World Championships. Hunt won her first senior event at the 2021 IFSC Pan American Championships in Ecuador, and she also won the gold medal in the women's speed event at the 2022 World Games in July 2022. Lastly, Piper Kelly, she secured her spot at Paris 2024 after beating Emma Hunt. She also competed in the Pan American Games in 2023 and the World Cup in 2023 and 2022. Now let's get into detail about those who qualify for open water swimming. Um, I find open water swimming so interesting. It's like so scary. Like, anyway, um, <laughs> we'll get more into the actual sport some other time. But right now we're just gonna talk about Maria, Mariah Denigan and Katie Grimes. Dinnigan has represented the U.S. at various international competitions. She's highlighted her status as one of the country's promising young swimmers. Her participation in events like the World Junior Championships provides her with valuable experience in high-level competition at a young age. Her experience in multidiscipline multi international competitions, including potentially the Youth Olympic Games, speaks to her broad cap capabilities in swimming. Open water swimming, it demands exceptional endurance and stamina, traits that Dinnigan has developed through rigorous training and competition. Her ability to maintain speed and efficiency over long distances is crucial in open water races. It, it is so impressive to me. Last, let's talk about Katie Grimes. We've all have heard this name before. She has competed in events like the World Aquatic Championships, and she represented the U.S. at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics at a remarkably young age, competing in distant freestyle events. In national competition, Grimes has consistently performed well, often placing at the top in her specialty events. Grimes excels in distance freestyle swimming, a discipline that demands excellent endurance, pacing, and technique. These attributes are also critical in over open water swimming, suggesting she could transition effectively if she focuses more on this area, I, I suppose. But, I mean, given that she has talent in the um, other type of freestyle swimming is already going to help her enough, you know, if you think about it. And she qualifies, so clearly she's good. Anyway, despite her, despite her young age, Grimes demonstrates a maturity in her racing strategy and mental toughness. 
And finally, we're going to talk about golf, where Nelly Korda is the only one that officially qualified for the team so far. One of Korda's most notable achievements is her victory at the Women's PGA Championship in 2021. That's really where she really, really got her name known. Korda represented the U.S. at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, where she competed in the women's individual golf event, finishing just, just outside medal positions. Also, Korda reached the number one rankings in the Women's World Golf Rankings, a testament to her consistent performance across various tournaments. Korda is known for her powerful and accurate drives, and her proficiency in putting and short game has been critical to her success. I like combine the word critical and crucial, I think. I just did that. Anyway, it, it's been a critical and crucial to her success. Last week, she clinched her sixth 2024 title at the Mizzou America's Open, and that's marked another significant milestone in her career. She became the first American player to win at least six times in an LPGA Tour season since Beth Daniel in 1990, who won seven times that year. With the second major of the season coming up, the 14-time winner is not really worried about keeping the momentum going and is looking forward to a week off before teeing it up for the U.S. Women's Open and according to her interviews. Nellie Corda's achievements in the golf world are impressive and her ongoing development and success make her a significant figure in the sport. Her technical skills combined with her competitive mindset and the ability to perform in high-pressure situations ensure that she will likely remain at the top of women's golf for years to come, in my opinion. I, I really... I'm inspired by her. She is very, very technical. So now we're going to take a short break before we begin our next segment where we're going to talk about women's soccer. We have a few updates on that. And we will see you guys soon after our break. <laughs> 